Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our February uh, summer camp pre-camp webinar. Uh, this is our second webinar in the series. Um, each webinar held the third Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. My name is Andrew Wright. I am the camp director for Camp Rotary. Um, for more information on everything we're going to cover in tonight's webinar, uh, you can head to michiganscouting.org and follow the Outdoor Adventures tab to Camp Rotary. We're going to be covering a lot of information tonight. Um, in just a moment, I will introduce our camp leadership team uh, so you know who's on the call and who will be talking this evening. We're going to talk about our second payment um, and what the remaining payment schedule is. Uh, camp scholarships health forms for summer camp, merit badge sign up and the process for that and how that is going to work. Uh, then our program director will uh, cover some of our camp program highlights. We'll go over some of our staffing needs and then we will have a question and answer period. Uh, this is a webinar format. It's not a standard ring central type of meeting. Um, the attendees that are on the webinar this evening will be able to listen, uh, but will not be able to ask any verbal questions. You do all have access to our chat feature uh, where you can type in questions uh, pertaining to what it is that we are talking about. Um, and then obviously at the end of the session, that question and answer period. Um, so throughout the session, um, please feel free to answer any or ask any questions that you have in the chat. And my team and I will uh, work to answer those. Um, and then things that we need to bring to the forefront that may benefit the uh, entire group we will talk about and discuss as well. This webinar is being recorded and it will be posted uh, online in the next couple of days on the michiganscouting.org website. Uh, simply click on that outdoor adventures tab, navigate to summer camp, and there you will find all of the pre-recorded meetings copies of the slide decks, um, as well as access to our leader's guide. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our team. Uh, joining us uh, tonight is uh, Ken McCaffrey, our program director, uh, Rick Kimmel, our uh, assistant uh, camp director, Corey Groth, our camping director, and Kyle Lachana, uh, our summer camp commissioner. Um, so they will be on the call with us tonight. One of the things that I want to bring to everyone's attention is uh, our legendary camp service promise to you. Uh, those of you that have been to camp before uh, know that we have a commitment to providing you with the best camp experience uh, that we can. In fact, uh, we're so dedicated to that that our commitment is on the screen uh, for you to see. Um, and our commitment is simply that we, the camp staff, are dedicated to providing our customers and guests with a legendary scout camp experience while participating in our life-changing year-round camp programs. We are committed to providing facilities, programs, services, and camp leadership that will consistently exceed the expectations of our customers and guests. Our Michigan Crossroads camps will be safe havens for experiencing the best of the adventures and values of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, that is our commitment to you. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you know what our commitment is so that if at any point in time, you're not feeling that that commitment is being met, that you can reach out to us and we can make sure that your camp experience is a positive one. Uh, we have some things that we are focusing on uh, currently. Uh, that is a, uh, a, we're striving to plan an innovative program that meets the needs of scouts and one that will be provided by qualified and talented staff. Um, what does that mean for you? Well, the summer camp is designed to be an extension of your unit program. So your unit program is uh, what takes place uh, precedent uh, on a year-round basis, and we are here with our summer camp to provide support 
to your unit program in the way of scouting activities and advancement opportunities and uh, having trained staff to be able to provide those things to you. We are working diligently to plan and implement high quality food service programs. Uh, all of our camps, Camp Rotary included, is currently in the process of uh, developing our menus for summer camp so that we can get those to you in a timely manner and be able to provide you with high quality, healthy, um, dietitian approved uh, meals, um, as well as make sure that we can accommodate uh, those special dietary needs that our folks have. Um, so we're in the process of, of working on that and getting that to you. Uh, we are continuing to upgrade and refresh our facilities. Um, sometimes a little bit of paint goes a long way, uh, but uh, we can't do that without your help. And I know that our mixed fix chair, Dave Lobs, would be amiss if I didn't mention uh, that we will be hosting a mix fix here at Camp Rotary uh, on uh, the weekend of May 7th, um, May 7th, May 14th. Um, I'll let Corey put that in the uh, chat along with uh, uh, where they can find some more information on mix fix. But that's your opportunity to come back and uh, give back to camp with those things that need to be done uh, to help in keeping our facilities fresh and updated for you. And then we want to make sure that we are engaging you uh, in our process and our implementation. So keeping you up to date with these monthly webinars, um, keeping you up to date with communications through email um, so that you know exactly what to expect um, when you set foot on camp in June or July. We're going to talk about the one thing that no one wants to talk about, which is uh, the camp payment schedule. We are coming up to the next payment deadline. We do have some units that are in our system that have not yet made their first confirmation payment. Um, if you are one of those units, you should have received an email from me in the last couple of weeks. We need to make sure that we're getting those commitments into camp so that we know exactly who to expect. Um, for those of you that did get your uh, first payments in on time, thank you. Uh, that is very helpful in us planning exactly uh, how we're going to operate camp and for how many people. The second payment is due on March 1st. Um, this is another $50 per youth camper payment. Um, that is what is due is $50 per youth camper, unless you miss the first payment deadline. If you missed that first payment deadline, uh, you will need to um, have $100 available for each youth camper and $50 for each adult camper uh, when you go in to make that March 1st payment. This payment is a significant one. This is the payment that has to be in and up to date in order for your scouts to choose merit badges, um, which will take place at the end of the month and we will go through that process uh, here in just a moment. Okay. On your screen is the way to make that payment. Um, you're going to log in to our summer camp registration page. Um, you can click uh, look up and look up registration uh, once you are on that page. You want to make sure that you have your registration number and the email address that you made that registration with available, and that will give you access to your summer camp registration. To make that payment, you'll follow the prompts at the top of the page, um, and then you have two options for making payment. Uh, one is an e-check where you will need a routing and an account number, and that can be made out of a checking or a savings account as long as you have those routing and account numbers. And there is no fee for using an e-check through the registration system. Um, or your second option is a credit card. There is a 2.75% convenience fee um, that is non-refundable for every transaction that's completed through the registration website. So please keep that in mind. Um, payments can be made uh, using the parent portal system. Um, for information on using that parent portal system, uh, please refer to our January webinar. Uh, as I stated, 
This is $50 per youth camper that is due now. If you missed the first payment deadline, it is $100 per youth camper due now and $50 per adult camper that is due now. Um, if you are not going to uh, make your March 1st payment and you missed your February 1st payment, please contact me. Um, I need to know what's going on. If you are going to be coming to camp, what the financial situation might be so that I can work with you on a payment plan uh, because we need to know who is coming to camp. So if you missed your first payment um, in uh, that was due February 1st, and you are not going to be able to make your March 1st payment, um, please send me an email. I'll have Corey put my email address in the chat for everyone, um, but please make sure to send me an email so that uh, I can get uh, that taken care of. We can make some comments on your account and make sure that your registration is still valid for the 2022 camping season. Uh, we know that uh, payment can sometimes be difficult um, going to camp does cost money and there are ways to uh, help alleviating that cost uh, through our camp scholarship program. We touched on camp scholarships at our kickoff in December and touched on them briefly in January. Um, so as a reminder, we have redesigned the process for 2022. Uh, you no longer need to work through your unit leader to get a application in for a camp excuse me, for a camp scholarship. Um, it's easier for families to uh, apply to. They simply go through uh, michiganscouting.org backslash scholarships um, and the whole process is right there. You can have up to half of your camp fee uh, awarded to you. Um, the camp fee uh, this year is $350. Um, so that means that you can have up to $175 uh, awarded to you toward camp. Uh, but we want to make sure that you are still trying to earn your way to camp. Um, so participating in those council and unit fundraising opportunities, such as the spring popcorn sale, uh, the Michigan Crossroads Council uh, hike-a-thon. Um, so make sure that you are participating in those. Uh, but those are some uh, ways to make sure that uh, you can help get to camp this summer. To be eligible for a campership, um, there are some things that have to be met. Uh, one is that uh, the youth must be registered with the Michigan Crossroads Council. Uh, council scholarships are only available to in-council units. That scout must also already be registered to attend an MCC Scouts BSA resident camp. And they must be recommended by uh, their unit leader and parent or guardian. The unit leader does not need to go through the process, but the unit leader should sign off on, yes, this is a scout. Yes, they are planning on coming to camp. And yes, we know that they do need assistance. Uh, you have to submit a separate application for each scout that is uh, requesting assistance. So if you have multiple scouts in your household, you will need to submit an application for both or each of those scouts that's living in your household. Um, those applications are available now. They've actually been available for almost two months. Um, the application period goes uh, through May 30th. However, we will be reviewing um, applications on uh, at, right after April 1. Uh, so try and have your uh, deadline, your application in by that April 1st date to be considered in our first round of uh, scholarship awards. Um, after we have completed that first round, we will continue to award scholarships uh, as there are funds available. Um, so please make sure that you are uh, filling these out early and getting them in on time. You will be notified by a member of our scholarship allocation committee uh, if you receive a scholarship. Please do not call us here at camp. We do not know uh, what scholarships have been awarded. We do not know the time frame. Um, that is all done uh, at the uh, district level and council level through our uh, scholarship allocation committee. Um, so you'll need to work with them if you have not heard anything. Um, and then please also be reminded that families can only apply for one type of assistance. There are two types of assistance available to you 
um, through the registration system. Uh, one is the camp scholarship and the other is a sibling discount. Um, the sibling discount is set up so that your first uh, sibling pays the full camp fee and each additional sibling receives a $25 discount uh, on their camp fee. So whatever is more feasible for your family is going to be the way to go. Um, but uh, just keep in mind that you don't get both. You will get one or the other. I'm going to turn the uh, presentation here over to uh, our assistant camp director, Rick Kimmel. And Rick is going to talk about health forms. Rick. All right. Can you hear me now? All right. Oh, oh, where's my slides, Andrew? I've got health forms up on the screen for you. Really? All right, All right. there we go. I don't know why <clears throat> my, my screen, screen went, away, went away, so, away, so I don't know what happened there. there. All right, so effective January 1st, the only health form this is back in 2010, I guess. That is a capture allowed is the uh, BSA annual health and medical form. And yes, you need parts A. Hard to see that, I know. Parts B1 and B2. Don't forget those. And part C. Very important to have them all. Otherwise, well, guess what? We don't have the proper form. Sports physicals, they will not do. They will not be accepted. And uh, if you're arriving without the proper health form, it will be expected to be complete the proper at your own expense to be able to remain at camp and no exceptions. And both youth and adult campers will be required to go through a medical check at camp as part of the check-in process. And the uh, medical, the BSA health and medical record is valid until the last day of the, of the month and the year it was issued. So again, if you got your uh, health form done and it was dated 621 to 2021, it's valid through the 630 at that point. So make sure you get those done early and, and get them put in. Also, I wanna say that if you are coming, when you're coming to camp to make your check-in process easy, much easier, make sure you have your health forms all in one packet, uh, along with your registry clearance forms in another packet, your camp roster in another packet, have them all together. That'll make your check-in process go so much smoother. And it helps us and it helps you. And uh, don't forget those camper release forms either. I know it's not part of the health form, but those are the things that we need. All right. Hope I covered that all. Yes, thanks, Rick. There's a couple of questions that popped up in the chat pertaining to health forms. Uh, Mike asks, uh, our med, form, med forms are not due until check-in. That is correct. Uh, we will uh, accept those medical forms um, as part of the check-in process. Um, please make sure that you are bringing a copy with you. Uh, Rick wants to know how many copies you need. You only need a copy, um, but the state of Michigan requires us to keep those health forms on file um, for quite a significant amount of time uh, after the completion of camp. That is a state licensing requirement, um, not a BSA requirement. So make sure that what you are bringing to camp with you, uh, you're not afraid to lose because we will not be giving them back uh, and we will not be making extra copies. Um, so when you turn those in, they will live here with us uh, and we keep those all in a uh, locked file cabinet in a locked room in a secure location. So Rick, and thank you. We won't you. be using camp doc uh, at this point either. That's correct. Uh, we uh, let everyone know last month that uh, we will not be using the uh, Camp Doc online uh, system uh, at this time. That's something we're going to revisit uh, for future seasons. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
I'm going to move into the topic that everyone's dying to know about, and that is how do I sign my scouts up for merit badges? Um, I will preface this by saying that the process that you are going to see will work uh, for both units that are and are not using the parent portal system. Um, so regardless of uh, if you're using parent portal or not, uh, the process for signing up for merit badges uh, is the same. Uh, when you're logged in to the system, you're going to want to select the youth that uh, you want to sign up for uh, their merit badge classes. You have to do it by youth. Um, so you click on the scout, you'll select their classes, you'll save, you'll click on the next scout, you'll select their classes, you'll save, you click on the next scout, select their classes and save, et cetera. The system will not let you select merit badges for any scout that has not paid uh, the $100 fee that is due by March 1st. That's a $50 payment that was due February 1st and a second $50 payment that was due March 1st. Um, I've had a lot of emails asking uh, if they're using Parent Portal and the uh, they have scouts that have paid the 100 and they have scouts that haven't paid the 100. Will those other scouts be affected from selecting merit badges? And the answer is no. As long as the scout has $100 paid toward them by March 1st, uh, the system will allow them to select their merit badges. Merit badge sign up um, at Camp Rotary uh, is going to take place starting at 8 a.m., uh, and that is 8 a.m. on Thursday, March 24th. Thursday, March 24th at 8 a.m. is when Merit Badge registration will go live for Camp Rotary. Um, we have from the Black Pug registration system a how-to video uh, on how to uh, select your merit badges. We are going to watch that video right now. And that video will also be available in the slide deck. Um, and we will post separately an email and a link to you as well. How to add classes to your schedule. To select classes for a single attendee, find their name and click on update information. Find the schedule field on the form and click on select classes. Use the drop-down menus to see classes from a single catalog or period. You can also search for classes. You can view all classes to see additional information from the catalog. This includes the period and days of the week it is offered, the number of spots available if there is a limit, additional fees for the class, any additional periods it is offered, as well as any minimum age or rank requirements. Click on an available class and it will move to the attendee schedule on the left. As you add classes to your schedule, conflicting classes will disappear from the available classes on the right. Depending on the event, you may be able to add a bundle of classes. If you select a bundle, all classes in the bundle will be added to your schedule. If classes in your schedule conflict with classes in the bundle, then they may not be added to your schedule. To remove a class from your schedule, click on the class and it will return to the available classes on the right. Other classes offered during that period will become available again. Once you have finished selecting classes for that attendee, you can view their class schedule. You can print the attendee class schedule, and if you have selected merit badges, you can print blue cards as well. To see all attendee schedules, go to Additional Actions and select Manage Participant Classes. To make adjustments to their schedule, select the attendee. Once you have made your adjustments, click on Show Class Schedule to return to the previous screen. If Merit Badge classes are offered, you will find the blue card icon next to each attendee. As long as the attendee has been booked, they will immediately hold a spot in the class. If they have not been booked, you will need to complete checkout for that attendee. Depending on the event, you may be able to access reports. The reports may vary as they are managed by the council, 
but you may be able to find schedules and other helpful reports here. All right, before I pass it over to Ken to talk about our program highlights, just a couple things uh, to note. Uh, the <laughs> registration system for selecting classes uh, will be set up here uh, by the end of this month, but you can view a list of all of the classes that we are offering uh, in the Camp Rotary Leaders Guide. Again, michigan-scouting.org. Click on Outdoor Adventures, Scouts BSA Summer Camp, and then click and download the Camp Rotary Leaders Guide. Those can be found specifically on page 55. Um, that is where all of those classes are posted and can be viewed for uh, times that they are being offered. Um, so now I'm going to turn uh, the microphone over to our assistant camp director of program, uh, Ken McCaffrey, uh, who is going to highlight uh, two of our program areas. This will be something that we will do uh, now through May, uh, highlighting uh, some of uh, e each of our key program areas in camp and what we offer in those areas. So, Ken. Hey, thank you. Good evening, everybody. We're going to start off with our first year camper program, which is known as PATH. This program is a great place for your first year campers who have not yet reached first class rank to come along for the week long program. They're going to work on all kinds of different rank advancements. One note, our staff does not sign off on those rank advancements. They're just going to teach the skill and it's up to you to decide if they've learned that or not. During the week, they're actually going to get to earn three merit badges because it seems to be what every kid nowadays wants to see is, you know, getting those merit badges on their sash. So they're going to be able to earn the orienteering, nature, and fingerprinting merit badges. Along with that, they're also going to earn their totem chip and fireman chip. Big event for the path is the overnighter up at North Camp. This is a chance to learn what they've or use what they've learned all week during the program. They're gonna set up their backpack, to carry all their gear that they need. We will have a trailer available to carry their tents and maybe a couple of camp chairs, but they're expected to carry all their clothing and bedding with them. It's only for one night, so they don't need to take a whole lot with them. Big bonus part of this is adults that are participating with the PATH program all week will actually be able to earn their IOLS training. All right, on to our next program for this week is going to be handicraft. This is a great place for scouts just to kind of kick back and do some arts and crafts area up in Deer Lodge. The indoor area, outdoor area, where they'll be able to work on all types of merit badges, including animation, art, basketry, Indian lore. Usually with the Indian lore, we have a large teepee set up outside to go with that merit badge. Leather work, model design, sculpture, wood carving, and added new this year is textiles merit badge. A couple evening merit badges is coin collecting, collections and fingerprinting. All those merit badges are only offered for one night. So they'll still have time to join into some other areas in their open program. A couple open programs that Tandycraft has is Lego Master Builder. We have two huge tubs of Lego. They just dig around and build whatever they want. And our ever popular tie-dye night. Pretty funny they do that on a Monday night and come Thursday, everybody's running around camp in tie-dye shirts and whatnot. One big thing to include here is if you are taking a merit badge, all the related costs of that merit badge are included. So if they're taking basketry, the basketry kits come with it. Same with the other merit badges in this area. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, I'm going to now uh, turn it back over to Ken, uh, Rick, and Kyle, uh, who are going to talk about some of the uh, staffing needs that we have on our property. So uh, camp team, here you go.
Okay, it looks like Rick's still trying to figure out how to unmute himself. So I'll get this started. <laughs> Big thing is program areas. We have almost every area in camp still needs a staff member or two. So if you have any scouts that would be interested in spending the summer at camp and get paid for it to do what I think all scouts pretty much love doing anyways is camping and doing merit badges and teaching merit badges. One big thing is those instructors, once they come to camp, they will actually be able to earn merit badges while they are there also. They can work directly with me and we can get some of their merit badges that they need to get done out of the way for them. Rick, you got anything? Um, well, I was just going to say just what Corey just put up that um, you do not have to be a scout to come work at summer camp. You can be a non scout. So if you have, you know, people who you're acquainted with, friends of yours who have kids that are of age to be working at summer camp, they need something to do for the summer. I mean, they will have an experience of their lifetime at the same time. Um, yep. I know both my kids worked at summer camp. Yes, they were scouts, but they had, I think, more fun being on camp staff and being the camp staff than, you know, than they a lot of other things they could have done by staying at home. So, again, I encourage those people to apply to come to work camp with us. Yep, and I think um, speaking like for myself, I've worked here through school, and it's been really helpful that this is a job that not only do I get paid and I have a salary pay, but I also have free housing for the summer. They feed me. Um, there's places to do laundry, so that's not an issue. Um, there's a lot of time off and opportunities to grow and develop with other people my age that work there. So it's a really good opportunity. I recommend it to all my friends um, just because of how useful it is, especially someone who's like late high school, college age, to be able to just work somewhere where kind of everything's all in one. I don't have to worry too much about paying rent and stuff for the summer. I just come up and I get paid to do what I like. Hey Rick, you mentioned scouts, scouts and non-scouts of age. Can you explain to them what of age means? Okay, there we go. I'm having technical difficulties here with my computer for some reason. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. So I could not hear a thing Corey just said to me. So maybe somebody can help me out. Sure, I was just commenting, you mentioned um, scouts and non-scouts of age to work camp staff. Could you explain to them about what ages you're hiring for? I do believe we started age 16, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think you might be able to be 15 to be a CIT, which is a counselor in training, which can handle those. Um, but it's not like you have to be 18 or 19. You can be younger to be on camp staff. Yeah, Rick, I'll chime in on that, that uh, there are uh, certain areas that do require uh that uh, you meet a certain age requirement cooks have to be at least 18 custodial staff has to be 18 um the area director positions that we have listed are 18 there are certain positions where you need to be 21 um so but 16 is correct um you can apply as early as 16 uh to work on camp staff um, i've been doing this a long time 20 years this year and there's a lot of benefits to working on camp staff uh, more than just, hey, I worked at summer camp. That's really cool um, because it's not every job where you can uh, build and learn things such as skills and communication, uh, problem solving, creative thinking, and leadership. It also helps individuals grow. Uh, they grow in areas such as uh, building a strong work ethic, uh, becoming more detail oriented learning how to be a team player, uh, realizing that you are a lifelong learner and becoming more resilient and a self-starter. Uh, and the big thing, and I try to uh, instill this in every staff member that works um, at Scout Summer Camp is that you become a part of a family 
and you learn how to function in a family. And then that in turn uh, relates over to your non-scout and your non-work family life as well. So there's lots of positives of working summer camp um, that you just can't get uh, flipping a burger at McDonald's, uh, not to knock on McDonald's, I've had my fair share. Um, but just those things that uh, um, you just don't get working in other jobs. So if you have scouts, if you have family members, if you have, uh, if you know of someone that would fill the need uh, that you we have here on the screen, um, they can go and apply today at michiganscouting.org uh, backslash camp staff app. Um, and those applications are emailed directly to us for us to review. Um, most of the time we will do a virtual interview because uh, driving uh, sometimes up to three to three and a half hours for a 45 minute interview is not always feasible. Um, Rick as the uh, assistant camp director lives in Illinois. So it's uh, very unfeasible for him. Uh, so most of those interviews will take place virtually uh, and have since even before uh, COVID. So uh, don't let that be a hindrance and have those folks apply today. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, uh, we have three more that are upcoming. Uh, our next one will be uh, exactly a month away on March 16th, uh, again at 7 p.m., again in April on the 20th, and finally our last uh, wrap-up uh, will take place in May. Uh, those webinars, again, are on uh, the third Wednesday of the month at 7 o'clock and uh, you can register for them at michiganscouting.org backslash outdoor adventures. So with that, um, I'm going to open up the chat for any questions and answers uh, on uh, anything that we've covered today. Steve's asking uh, when you would use the link other attendees feature in parent portal. Link other attendees is designed, Steve, so that if you have multiple scouts in the same household, um, you can link them together and then you only need one registration link. Um, for more information on how to use that, uh, the using parent portal video from last month's webinar is going to be your best tool on how to link those together and utilize that feature. Uh, Mike is asking us to verify our all forms due um, for hard copy turn-in at camp check-in. Yes, uh, all forms are due as hard copies and will be due at check-in. The May webinar will cover in detail the check-in process uh, on what forms you need to bring and how to have those uh, in there. Uh, Dave Oakley asks, are there any merit badges that were dropped or are there any new merit badges? Uh, Ken, you want to touch on that one real quick? Yeah, Dave, this year is a different year again, just for the fact that we had to drop so many merit badges last year due to COVID and our restrictions. So as you can say, there's probably 30 to 40 new merit badges this year that we did not offer last year. So. And aside from the, from the traditional lineup, the one that was added was textiles to the handicraft. Uh, area. Uh, the next question is, can additional people log into the registration site? Each of your registrations has the ability for you uh, to put in up to three additional contacts. Um, and those email addresses uh, will all have access to the registration. So if there are other folks in your unit, that you want to have access to your summer camp registration, please put their email address in the additional email fields on your summer camp registration.
Uh, Karen asks, is the uh, leader's guide merit badge selection correct? Uh, yes, what is published in the leader's guide is what will be offered at camp this year at those times. We are in the process of updating the uh, uh, registration system so that it matches and reflects the leader's guide. That is a yearly process um, that uh, the system makes us update. Uh, Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, but typically it's late January, early February every year we have to go in and adjust those merit badges um, because they get uh, the updates from the national office put into the system. And then we have to go in and match those updates with our prerequisites. Am I, is that correct? The end of January, early February? Yeah, actually, I, I just am finishing that process up right now. Awesome. So that means that uh, in the next day or two, uh, if you log on to the registration system, uh, if you click on the CAS class catalog um, button, uh, what populates from the uh, Black Pug registration system uh, will also match what is in the leader's guide. So uh, the leader's guide is your best bet. That is the, uh, the Bible per se that we operate camp off of. Um, so please refer to that leader's guide because that is the information uh, that is correct. Here's one more camp paper, bringing paperwork during check-in, Andrew. The best thing to do for your paperwork is all you say all your DHS forms together, all your health forms together, all your camper release forms together. Do not sort things out by person or scout sort them out by the type of paperwork. No, that's very good, Ken. Thank you. I, I must have missed that one as I was uh, scrolling through. Um, let's see. Uh, Ken, Jason Hobbs wants to know what type of adult programs we might have in camp. I know that that's one of your highlights for next month, I believe it is, but you want to touch on that briefly? Yep, we still offer, you know, a couple of different trainings. We have climb on safely in the Copen climbing area, a couple of your water trainings down in aquatics. Like I said, IOLS will be offered with our shadowing our path program. And then there's also a couple of different open programs that are just geared towards the adults too to help keep you guys busy. There's a couple questions popping up as it pertains to uh, uh, the patrol pod system we had last year, tenting last year. Uh, right now, um, from our conversations with Lara in the state of Michigan, um, those are not concerns that we have going into this summer. Um, we should be able to uh, have uh, regular merit badge classes and should be able to uh, tent regularly Obviously, the state of Michigan uh, can uh, do what they wish. Um, so if something were to change, um, which they do not believe that it is, uh, will, um, we would uh, communicate that with you. Um, so right now we are looking at what I will cross my fingers and dare to say a normal uh, summer operation schedule right now. Um, I received a couple questions offline about citizenship and society merit badge. So I know nobody asked about that tonight, but just so that it's clear, um, the new merit badge that's offered citizenship and society has a very different format than all of the rest of the merit badges out there. Um, and that format, uh, you cannot teach it in a group setting. So none of our camps will um, be offering that. And that is actually uh, a national policy. So that particular merit badge isn't available at camp. Um, but you can contact your local uh, district advancement chair to find out what uh, citizenship and society merit badge counselors there are in your area. And we'll be growing that information as a, as a counselor as more people register and go through those programs. Um, so just want to throw that out there, even though it wasn't asked yet, I get asked that almost daily.
Thank you, Corey. Um, with that, um, let's see, there's one final question I see. Uh, all documents are hard copy. Can they be uploaded? If so, where? No, there is nowhere to upload any documentation. Um, you will bring those hard copies with you to camp. Um, as always, Corey has put my email in the uh, chat quite a few times. I'll ask her to do that one more time. I'll ask Ken and Rick and Kyle to also place uh, uh, their contacts in there as well. Um, if at any time you do have a question that arises, um, please feel free to contact one of us um, so that we can uh, take care of you guys and make sure that your summer camp experience is a positive one. I'll give them just a second to get those in the chat um, so that you guys can copy those and write those down. Hey, um, Andrew. Yes, ma'am. Well, well they're they typing that, can I get one more? I'm echoing. One more plug here for the Hikeathon campaign um, because if you haven't, it was new last year and you maybe have heard about it and don't know what that is. Uh, but the Hikeathon campaign is a really simple way for your unit to raise funds. It's like uh, asking for sponsorships like you might do if you were doing a race or a 5K, but it would be a hike that your unit decides to set uh, either individually or as a group. You can take a hike on your own or at one of our council sponsored ones um, that we'll be hosting. But once you sign up for the Hikeathon, we create an online link for you. So you can ask friends and family to donate online and then the um, profits for that campaign are split evenly between your unit and our council scholarship programs and camp maintenance programs. So you can talk to your scouts about earning their own way to camp and also supporting other scouts who are uh, not able to afford it. So it's a really simple fundraiser. You can do it um, just by sharing a link on social media and you don't have to handle any product or handle any money. It's all done electronically and we send a check back to your unit um, in mid-June. So there is a webinar all about how it works on Sunday, February 27th. And I will again, put that link in the chat. Um, we had uh, several units participate last year and as a council, uh, we raised $24,000, um, really, really simple. So this year uh, we're hoping to get more units involved and in participating. Awesome, thank you, Corey. Um, so with that, uh, thank everyone Thank everyone for logging in tonight and for your attention. Um, as we get closer to camp, uh, we do know that more questions will arise. Please reach out to one of us uh, so that we can uh, do everything to make your summer camp uh, preparation experience a smooth one. Uh, thank you for your time this evening and we will see you uh, in exactly a month on uh, Wednesday, March 16th. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.